I have an unusual lifestyle. I do a lot of stuff. I mean, just like the, the everything that I do is weird in a way compared to like, you know, sort of, it's not like your normal guy that works an office job or something, you know? It's like the primary motivations in my life are based upon art and rock and roll and things like that. And not just any art and rock and roll, but like a very peculiar sort of types of art and rock and roll and stuff. And uh, to find somebody who not only understands that, but is like completely got her own perspective and her own trip about all this stuff and whose own motivations are also very, very deep and very strong. Uh, for the fact, the fact that we wound up together somehow and that it works so well together is like really amazing to me. Like I, I, uh, uh, I don't know. Because I, you couldn't just drop most people into the situation, relationship with Ed Ackerson. It wouldn't really, it wouldn't work very well, you know? You can understand by just talking to me this much what it's like to be around me all the time, you know? It's like, imagine doing that every fucking day, you know? And, and, so, and, and, and somehow, we actually really enjoy it, you know? She does, I think that she enjoys it. I don't think that she just tolerates it. I think it's actually something that she is willingly participating in. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it. The fact that Annika is there to, to carry on and that I'm able to impart some of my ideas and thoughts and, and knowledge and, and, uh, you know, and personality onto her I'm so happy that I do have the opportunity to do that. Being able to do that is a primary, a primary task in my life. And if like if there's one goal I want to do, it's like I want to be able to get her to understand who I am and to love the things I love and to understand that she can love the things that she loves, uh, whatever they wind up being that she finds. And so I got to keep my eye on that process and being there for her. And if I were to get into kind of self-indulgent, like sort of self-reflective thing too deeply about my personal condition, that's no service to her. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge disservice to her, especially if I may not have that long of time to contribute. I better be contributing now, you know. The thing that's changed now is uh, the, I no longer have that sense of, of just uh, of eternity. Like it's like it doesn't, uh, it's not a good bet that I can just burn time and, you know, make up for it at some point in the future because there may not be a future. So I can bum out and worry about it or try to prepare for some sort of eventuality that I don't know what it is, like what shape or, or you know, like something bad will probably happen. I don't know how, like what shape it will take, when it's going to happen. Um, Sitting around and worrying about that stuff is completely counterproductive. And I have very, very strong reasons to be here and be focusing on, on what's happening now, most particularly Annika. But also the time that I'm spending with Ashley and the time that I'm spending with the other people I care about and the contributions that I can make to the projects I have in process. Um, and so doing anything other than just carrying on with the stuff that I love to do to the best of my abilities and the best that I, my condition will allow, uh, doing anything other than that is irresponsible, I think. The value that I place on the opportunities I've been given and the feeling that I have of being here like basically every moment, uh, knowing that that stuff is not permanent necessarily, uh, is very, very difficult to put into words without sounding like, uh, sounding very cliched or sounding very, uh, like being trivial about something that is actually super duper deep.